you never usually, when you're doing these guys, if you plant just one seed, it's probably not a good idea. So we're gonna go ahead and start the uh, bell peppers now. You see they've got a red coating. Does it say anything about the red coating? No, it doesn't specifically say anything about it. In this particular case, um, I will probably wash them down too, just a little bit. Um, I'm gonna say, like I said, you can plant in place. Actually, I'm not gonna wash them down because that was kind of a pain. And as long as you keep adding water to it, that stuff will eventually wash off. So this may slow down the process just a little bit. Uh, but they put that coating on there and it, it will wash away. Um, some people, depending on the seeds, they'll tell you soak them for a couple hours. This one, uh, I usually buy my peppers where they've already done this process for me. <laughs> um, just to make it easier. So with seeds like this, you're going to want to plant a couple seeds in each one of the things. You don't want to do one at a time. Uh, some seeds need to be together to germinate. The other part of this is you get enough seeds that you can do like three or four. Just kind of poke them in a little bit. And um, they just, you don't have to go deep. They just got to be in a little ways. And um, there's one, three. Three, three or four, three or four will do. There's a couple right in there. And I just kind of poke them in. And by using a couple, there's a better shot that I'm gonna get a plant. Um, with bell peppers, um, you're, they're gonna be big plants and you're gonna get lots of bell peppers from them, usually once you get them to the stage that they're growing. So um, I don't do too many bell pepper plants at the same time, otherwise I'll grow more than I can, I can eat and my family can eat. Uh, if I can get away with anywhere between four to six bell pepper plants, I'm probably doing pretty good for what I can handle. The other thing to keep in mind is where you've added seeds, because I'm going along here, and I think I've gotten all these guys. So I'm gonna probably end up having more seeds out of here than what I'm gonna do. Um, and if you get a few too many seeds in there, not a problem. If it starts growing too many uh, plants in there, we can always uh, prune those out later and when you go to transplant these you will end up peeling off the uh, the cloth on the outside most of the time and at that point you can start separating out separating out the roots just kind of like what uh, Patty covered in her video last month um, where she was separating out plants where things were starting to grow together we'll do the same thing before we actually put these in our final uh, garden once we get to the outside transplant again I may be going a little heavy on the seeds here just because I really want to up my chances at one I'm going to make. Because not sometimes uh, you'll put some seeds in and there's just one that it's hard to tell isn't whether it's going to make it or not. So uh, I may go a little overboard here. Um, but that's usually all you need to do to get these guys to grow. Like I said, about three or four seeds a piece. And... Um, that's usually how I, I plant them together, together to get them to grow. And then I'm gonna cover them with a little bit of water. Oop, and then see some of them washed out, which is what I was afraid of. Um, and that's why you kinda of wanna poke them in good. If you can get the edges of these guys up a little bit, that'll help catch some of the water. Let me push these guys in a little bit better. I may end up with some wild plants growing on the outside here. We'll see. Okay, so when you get that all done, and I've still got quite a few seeds left here, so uh, I'll probably do some here, maybe do some at the house. I may end up with some extra plants this year. What I'm gonna do now, uh, just make sure I've got a little bit of water in there. And then uh, you can just place this back over it. You can place it back on this way. Just do not cut it off from air. You want to let it breathe a little bit, but you want to let the, you, this is basically acting as a greenhouse. And it may just take a little bit of tape here and actually do this. Because <clears throat> you want air to get back in, you just want to keep the moisture in as well. Um, so you want to allow it to breathe a little bit. Um, rosemary is another one of the herbs. Now this one gets to be a big branchy plant. So I'm probably, instead of doing it like this, which I would do with like herbs like 
um, the cilantro and the uh, parsley. These guys, I will probably plant them the same way um, that I did the bell peppers because you get a nice bushy plant out of this. Okay, so we're back. It's been a, an hour or two since we were doing the bit of setup earlier. We left off putting these guys, these uh, uh, um, rosemary seeds in water. And the green stuff never really washed away with them. The, but they're cracking open a little shell out of them, which is what I believe is supposed to be happening. So from what I understand, you can give those a couple hours soak and they'll uh, they'll start cracking as you can see there's little brown spots in there before they were pretty solid green and so what i'm going to do is just do the same thing i did before where i dab get a couple seeds and kind of rub them right there in the middle of the the thing i went ahead and added more water in here since uh earlier too because uh, these things had gotten pretty dry uh they soak up water pretty fast and if you don't have a cover on it it will it will dry up pretty quick and again, I'm putting about three or four seeds per uh, per thing here. Let me put an extra one or two there, because I don't think I want to start with two. And so I'm just dabbing in these soaked seeds into the little center hole of these uh, uh, grow tablets. And I grabbed a lot right there, so I'll probably come back and grab some more here in a minute. But it's getting kind of a little mushy with these guys, so I kind of want to be careful here. We don't want to smash them too badly, but put a few in each one. And I'm probably putting too many in each one at this point, but um, we'll see how it shakes out. Um, <clears throat> So we've done that. I would probably usually pour the water back over it. It's got the extra seeds in it. So we may just get some random seeds in between the things. But once you're done with all that, as you can see, this is forming a, a moisture film. These were the uh, cilantro seeds from earlier that we wiped down that had that green stuff. Really should have flipped it this way. But it already started collecting that moisture up and that's what you want these to do. You want to leave them a little open where they can breathe. I've seen where people were flipping the lids to do this. So we just kind of leave it open, let it breathe. Um, it'll form, you'll see that moisture go, go in. You'll need to add water uh, about once a day, once or twice a day, good. it's good to check. You don't want to drown it. You just want to make sure that there's, that it's still humid in there. Um, you don't want it to dry up. Went ahead, did the seeds here, put in a little bit more water in the bottom here, uh, cause it was starting to dry up as well. Um, the other thing we're going to do here is this guy is already dried up. I started getting a few more of these guys to break up. So I'm going to go ahead and pull them apart and we're going to do the radish seeds in here. And I, I found a tray that I think will be deep enough, hopefully to at least get the radishes started. Um, radishes don't get real big. The, the type that we have here don't get real big. So I think we might actually be able to do this. And you can see this is still dry, even though I've wiped this down pretty good. Um, these are just regular uh, uh, sparkler radishes, what they call them. Uh, the ones I've liked growing at, uh, at home were the icicles. I have done these sparklers before. The first ones I did were sparklers. I was surprised how well they grew down here. Um, now where I'm at, it's a little bit sandier, so that may be a factor. So I don't know if it's going to do so well in this peat moss, but we'll, we'll see. Um, and they grow relatively quickly. You can get radishes. They say uh, to, from seed to plant in three weeks to a month. Um, and you can get multiple uh, plants of them through a year. So they're one of those things you can just keep going. Uh, they're, they're a very hardy plant to grow. Potatoes are the same way. If you do potato boxes, They'll grow them in columns. If you just, I've seen, uh, heard people doing it with tires or boxes where they stack them. And as you get the plant growing, as it grows up, it will keep moving the roots up so that there's potatoes on top. And you can get 100 pounds of potatoes if you've got it in an area that uh, isn't going to freeze too badly. Um, and you can get, you can keep it going year round as well. 
you know, as long as you keep it watered and working. Um, I haven't done that one. My dad said that they did that one a lot when he was a kid. Um, it's one of those things I may get around to at some point in doing um, out of my house because I've got stuff out there where I could I could build up the boxes. Um, so again, just stripping this all down. Uh, so kind of got that all broken up. Again, I'm not real sure how this is going to go with radishes because I have done them and they've been in sandy soil. I've left left this a little. Uh, dryer at this point and I'm going to pour water back over it and it does have the seed coat it doesn't say it has seed coating let's see and I thought we could see through it but we can't so and a lot of things like this you don't really have to bury real deep you might make a line in the dirt <clears throat> and uh, if you're careful my dad says always grab it by the hand you got better control. I've tried to do by the seed and see then I get too many in one spot. So I end up having to spray it out a little bit. But stuff like this, if you're out in the big garden, it's good to plant out in rows. Um, and I'm getting probably way too many seeds too close. But in an uh, artificial environment like this, that usually probably is not going to be that big of a deal. So dude, I can maybe pull three lines through here. And yeah, it's not the prettiest set of lines, I will admit, but just kind of get them through. And I'll do some on the outside line here, and then just kind of give it a rough over there. Let's do a line right in there. And I've put way too many in stacks here, but normally that's what you do. A little further out, you do a couple at a time. Again, just like most things when you do plant them. You do a few at a time. I've got more seeds in here than I could probably really fit in here. I'm just throw them around. Since this is all artificial, anyhow. But out in the field, that's what you would do. You'd want to do it all in lines and rows. It makes it a lot easier. It makes it easier to go and separate. If you get these things clumped together, um, in a small environment, this is not bad. We don't have to dig into the ground, but if you're out in the field and you're planting these things, um, and you do not do your lines, it's a nightmare to go in there and, uh, try to unpull pull them from each other um, so that's why it's really good to do it in lines you want to build up little mounds just put a line through that mound and uh, drop a few seeds in here and there do a long line kind of separate it out um, with radishes I don't remember if this is one of the ones where it's an issue there are males and females and you want to pull the males that would be a later stage thing that you can look up um, the males don't taste as good and they're really rough uh, texture wise um, radishes you want to get them when they're pretty young um, they're more tender that way if you let them get to be too big um, they get to be pretty tough so all that done we're just going to throw in a little bit of water um, there we go so that's probably enough you don't, again, want to do too much. This is a little bit drier. Uh, again, I'm going to just, just loosely place that over. But for me, I do like avocado. So one of the things I found, instead of using the to toothpicks, which you would uh, suspend the seed in a cup with two picks that were poked in, is some ingenious person decided that you could put them in a boat that the seed could fit in the boat. So you want the pointy end up, this end right here is where the root's gonna come out. You want the pointy end up. We'll go ahead and peel this uh, layer off here in a minute. And then this will float in water. So instead of having to worry about toothpicks and keeping your water level proper, this thing's gonna float in a bowl of water. And as long as there's some water in there, in theory, this is gonna be sitting the right way. You do not wanna drown this seed in water. It needs to be sticking out of the water, they say, um, about 75%. Only about a quarter of this bottom part of the seed needs to be in water for it to actually grow. From what I've read. Um, <clears throat> I have tried doing avocados in the past and I'll get them to a certain point and then I'll forget about them and then I won't get them completely grown. Um, they can take a couple months to grow in some situations. Now if you got you a ripe avocado and you can tell it's gonna be a little sm smushy um, and this has only got green on it because I did an avocado right before this. 
you want to just nice and gently slice through the avocado long way. You do not want to cut through the seed, and if your avocado is good and ripe, it'll go right through there, no problem. If there's any difficulty in there, your avocado probably wasn't ripe yet. Um, just want to go ahead and dig out your seed. A lot of people will go ahead at this point, take their spoon, and pull their seed out. Need a little avocado there. And this guy's going to be all, all kinds of slimy and <laughs> go everywhere. So do be careful pulling these out. They love to fly everywhere, especially when they're this slimy. So <clears throat> to get them ready to go in the water boat, we're going to clean it up in the sink and get all the slime off of it. And you'll never get to where it feels completely uh, uh, slimeless, but you'll get you can get it pretty close. Just you know, make sure it's pretty pretty decently clean. You don't see any like green spots. Um, we're gonna go ahead and grab a paper towel, a couple paper towels. Wipe them down again when you're doing this part. Be careful. You don't want it flying everywhere. Okay. And once you got in that state, this one I've let dry a little bit. I don't know which is going to be easier to peel, dry or wet, but they say you should peel off this outer layer very carefully. Don't cut it off. You want to just, it should come off with your thumbnails. And you'll just scrape away and you'll see that it's a separate little layer, almost like an onion skin. Um, get up under it, just start peeling it back. And just do this very gently. And you'll end up with this kind of yellowish seed under here. And you'll see that there's a little line. And this line that's in here is going to crack when it gets ready. When this seed, the, 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 uh, it begins to sprout and I've gotten it to the point where it started putting up leaves and it, this thing will split along that line this way and split out and that's where your your leaves are going to come from as you can see this is almost like a leaf like material right here we're gonna put our little boats in and they're floating and just gotta make sure your seeds are pointed up the right way as you get them in there and voila, there's your avocado boats. Um, again, like I said, we've got a lot of things planted in here today. Uh, I think the only thing I've missed out of my group was parsley and carrots. Carrots I may should do from the house. I don't know if I'll get them in early this year. If I do, I may be able to get them for this. Actually, I may have to wait till February. I do expect we're gonna have a late freeze this year, so. Um, there's our avocado boats and these little boats are kind of cool You could actually put a toothpick in here with the flag So that's kind of ironic given that the whole idea of printing these was to get away from having to use toothpicks, but um, I'll probably print me a couple more of these boats and give me a couple more avocados. Just watch your water level on those and again, they say it can take Two or three months to get one of those avocados up to size to where you will transplant 